Right, basic theory of jiu-jitsu is very simple. It's threefold, okay? I want to take the fight to the ground. I want to dominate the position where I can effectively attack without being attacked. And I want to end the fight, okay? So we end the fight with a, with a choke hold, an arm lock, or a leg lock. Uh, choke results in unconsciousness in about six to eight seconds. An arm lock or a leg lock results in something being broken or dislocated. So all of those are definitive fight ending techniques. If I choke you unconscious, obviously I can walk away. You're incapacitated, uh, technically. I can do whatever I want at that point. If I break your arm, even if you're the baddest person in the world and you want to continue fighting, I broke your arm when you had two good ones, second time around is going to be easier for me. If I break a leg, again, I can walk away. At best, you might hobble after me, but more than likely one of your friends is going to come up and be like, hey, let's not mess with that guy anymore. So with that said, we didn't really talk about punching, kicking, or striking. Um, now in a normal jujitsu class, that's not part of it. But speaking in self-defense terms, there's always a lucky punch, okay? Um, and basically what that means is the, the better fighter can be winning the fight and catch something he didn't see coming and it changes the trajectory of the fight completely, okay? Uh, whether it be a knockout, a cut, or even just getting rocked to the point he can't recover. So in a self-defense scenario, I want to take luck completely out of the equation. Self-defense uh, could very easily be a life and death situation. So no luck for me. There's no such thing as lucky jujitsu. I have to know exactly how to get to a position. I have to know how to maintain that position. And I have to know how to finish from that position. Okay. So, so again, with jujitsu, speaking specifically with self-defense, um, take the fight to the ground dominate the position where I can effectively attack and not be attacked and end the fight with a submission. All right, guys, let's look at one of, in my opinion, the most important moves in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. It's the sitting and standing with base. Okay. So what this looks like is I have one leg up and one leg down. My left leg is up. My right hand goes back and my left arm rests on top of my knee here. Okay. This is a very natural, very unassuming position. Um, but I actually, this is like one of the big formalities of my academy. When we sit, we sit this way. When we stand, we stand with base. Uh, and the reason is twofold. Number one, this is my combat posture, okay? If somebody knocks me down during a fight or they approach me while I'm sitting, this is the posture I want to adhere to, okay? Uh, number two, the motion of the stand we're going to find all throughout jiu-jitsu. We're going to, this sweeping motion that we're going to do with our hips, you're going to find it all throughout um, sweeps and even entering submissions, transitions into different positions, et cetera, et cetera, okay? So the standing with base, what this looks like is uh, all my weight is gonna be on my front foot and on my back hand. Now I wanna pick my bottom leg and my hip up off the mat. So I should be able to kind of float here like this, right? I'm not on the ground. I should be able to pivot a little bit, okay? So if you can't do this, this is a great drill for you. So I should be able to pivot a little bit. The standing itself is the latter half of that motion. So what I'm looking at is getting this knee and this foot past my arm that's posting, okay? So I'm here, I'm gonna bring that knee, so I bring my leg up and I step back passing that arm and I stand. So I have a good solid base here. If somebody tries to tackle me or they try to pull me, I'm in a good spot. But I'm not gonna stand here and like, horse stance, fight it out, right? So as soon as I get up, I slide that leg back into a more natural stance, okay? So a couple things with this though, I need to be very aware of my posture as I'm doing it, okay? So as we're beginning this technique, it's okay if I need to maybe put my hand on the ground and step and kind of slowly just work into the ability to not do it. But when it matters, I don't want to be face down. Okay, so the way I teach this is head up, hand up, hip up, and heist. You'll notice my eyes stayed up, my back stayed straight, I'm now on my feet, and then I can slide that in, okay? So this isn't a slow movement either. Head up, hand up, hip up, heist. So I wanna keep my eyes up, I keep my head and my back upright as much as I can. Okay, so the combat importance of this, um, if I have someone standing over me, I can keep my foot and my hand pointed at them, okay? I can see 
my opponent in his entirety. I can keep my eyes up. I can also keep my head on a, on a swivel here, right? I, I'm able to look around real quick if I need to. If he moves around me, all I'm gonna do is use that bottom leg and this bottom hand to rotate on my axis. So I can keep that hand and foot pointed at him and I can pivot on my axis a lot faster than he can run around me. Like he's not gonna juke me out and get to my back, okay? It's very easy for me to keep up with him, all right? If he's grabbing or throwing little jabs at me, it's very easy. I can just kind of just parry this out. I can even push a little bit with that front leg. If he takes a big swing at me, I can rock back, put my legs between us as if I want to fight and guard. Or if he takes a big swing, I can rock back and I can rock up and start working into a takedown, okay? If I need to, not only can I move around in a circle, but I can move backwards, pushing with my legs, and I can pull myself forward to close that distance, right? So distance management. I'm able to kick, roundhouse kick, with this leg here, right? Whoa. And I can kind of stop kick with my bottom leg right there, boom. So I can rock it out, boom, okay? But the most important part is the way we stand, okay? So if he's standing over me, again, head up, hand up, hip up, heist, bring my leg back. I've created a good amount of distance here, okay? Now I can couple that with a kick, right? Distance management. I can throw this bottom leg kick, boom, get him to back up or even stop his forward motion, pop up and out. And I've got a good amount of distance. If he's kind of already on me, he's holding me down, he's trying to pin me, what have you, all of his weight just goes to that backhand. I can still very easily stand with base, shoot in, or break away, okay? And if he's grabbed me, as I'm starting to stand, he tries to pull, I've got good base, I can break away, or again, start moving in, getting into my clinch, okay? So the standing with base, again, to me is very important as far as self-defense goes, and just the overall learning to use that, that hip motion of it, okay? So one more time, just right, Ryan's moving around a little bit. I keep up with him, okay? I'm gonna throw a kick, boom, I can, boom. I can stand up and be ready to go, okay? If he comes in, he's taking big swings at my head, boom, very easy. Oh, oh, come in, boom, ah, switch sides, boom. Now I can take him down. So it's combat effective. The biggest mistake I see anybody make is doing this here, where they start looking down, okay? I can't see him, he can jump on my back, he could kick me in the face, okay? So I need to always be prepared, even if I stop, like I don't wanna be face down, I wanna be head up, hand up, hip up, ice, right, boom, ah, ready to go. Now we work in, again, distance management. Oh, don't let me down, get in. Take him down, mount him. Choke him out, don't punch, choke him out. You can punch if you want, all right?